Hello and welcome to Dartmoor Stumps and this time we are doing the Merivale walk. Unusually I'm actually walking completely opposite direction to where we need to be going because the car park directions in the book are awful. You won't find it basically. I only know it because of local knowledge. I've been here before. The postcode that's in here will actually take you down to Merivale. Um, this isn't Merivale where we are, um, but up there is Princetown. Um, I'm filming this after doing the Princetown walk, so I've just driven down there. You can see North Hessery Tor on the hill. You're going to be probably coming up this way, and you'll see this parking space. I mean, you, you once you know what it looks like, you can't really miss it. Um, it's a little sort of, you know, all these trees and the walls. It's the only bit that looks like it on this road. Um, and this road is the Tabby to Princetown Road. Just look at that. If you see that, this is where you've got to go to begin the Merivale walk. So yeah, to me, this isn't Merivale. I don't know where this is, but Merivale to me is further down. And there's a pub there. I can't remember the name of it. Dartmoor Inn, is it? I don't know, it might be. Who knows? Anyway, there's a pub there. That to me is Merivale, so... I don't know, maybe this is Merivale. I'm just an ignorant person who doesn't know. We'll see. So we start off going through this little gap in the wall. Oh, that's a bit of a squeeze. Into this like courtyardy bit. Oh. And uh, yeah, this is just a bit odd. I don't know what this was. No way. It says the low walls by the parking area are all that remains of fucking tall school. This was a school. I wouldn't have guessed that in a million goes. It opened in 1915. What? And it closed as recently as 1936 before demolition in the 1960s. It became a private house, hence its name Four Winds. That's insane. And all of that's gone. It's now a car park. Isn't that odd? Like, that's proper odd. That doesn't make any sense at all. That's the more for you. Right, anyway, oh, through another little gap in the wall. And these little gaps, you know, they, I guess the little kids would run through there, like a little pen going out to play on the moor. <laughs> oh, it's not a bad view, is it? Not bad at all, look at that. Let's do the basics. Distance, two miles, gradient almost level. Uh, severity, easy terrain, but on open moorland. Should not be attempted in poor visibility. Time, one hour. So, quite a short walk this. It's kind of why I've opted to do to film the two back to back, because they're both quite short walks. Um, seem to make sense. It's a lovely day, lovely, lovely day. So it says, with your back to the road, go through the gap in the stone wall. We've done that. Past the prominent conifer. Done that. And through another gap in the back wall. Turn right. Do not cross the leak. Oh. Right. Sorry, John. Didn't mean to. Right. Do not cross the leak. Turn right. Walk alongside on the grassy moorland. Soon you will see two stone rows ahead. Mm bit boggy 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 a little bit is that the leap ah, can't be in it it don't look big enough to be a leap it's like a little trickling stream anyway i'm sure it'll become apparent if we don't see the two rows of stones hello them birds tweeting beautiful hey it's a lovely landscape here Look at that. Oh, actually, yeah, looking at the map, it is a little bit of a walk to the uh, the two rows of stones. Oh, yeah. Kind of looks a bit different in the book. That looks like a small thing, and that looks like a big thing. But the book does have the quarry in the background, so that's got to be it. That's got to be it. 
yeah so that over there that is what I would call Merivale that valley there actually the one that goes on up and up round the corner and you can go back round eventually back down to Peter Tavy um, that's what I would call Merivale I guess we are skirting the top of sort of one side of the valley as much has been written about this magnificent Bronze Age ceremonial site. It has all the elements you might hope to see with stone rows, a stone circle, standing stones, burial cairns, and more than 30 hut circles. Woo. Near the start of the walk, we will see the two parallel stone rows, an almost unique feature. That's very nice. Are we allowed to cross the leap now? This is what I'm wondering. So soon you will see the, the two stone rows ahead. Shortly before passing the large blocking stone at the end of each row, cross the leap on a tiny granite clapper bridge. Hey, you know, it's possible I've already walked past that. Unless it's that. Uh, no, I think I'm going to go back and have a look and make sure there isn't a little, a little bridge. Because I must admit, I was not looking out for one. Okay, we found it. That is indeed a tiny little bridge. Walk along the left stone row. Okay. So that's this one. Stone rows are not uncommon on Dartmoor. And we will see more on other walks in this book. You have two so close together it is very rare indeed. The answer to the obvious question why will never be known for sure. After 75 metres you will see a large but broken capstone of a very good cyst burial chamber a little further along the stone row is a ruined can okay we're just gonna walk along here it does kind of make you think why what's this about is it a road maybe these gravestones I don't know. it's interesting isn't it ah oh, is that the broken capstone I think it is. Just beyond the end of the left stone row, turn right and go over a substantial bridge down a grassy path towards Great Miss Tor on the skyline ahead. I guess we'll get to the end of this and see if there's a bridge. I'm going to scratch. Top of the morning. <laughs> so just before the end of the left stone row, turn right and go over a a substantial bridge down a grassy path towards Great Mist Tor on the skyline ahead and not towards the quarry on your left. I'm completely lost. We've gone down there. See that's the end of the rose there. Substantial bridge. Oh. Is that... I guess that's more substantial than the other one. We'll do that, right. Go over there and down a grassy path towards Great Mist Tor on the skyline ahead, not towards the quarry to your left. Right, so I guess we are heading this way. Towards that tor up there. And not, indeed, towards the granite quarry down there. I think this is one of those videos that's going to be extremely useful to people who want to come here um, because the landmarks are a little bit a little bit vague right when you meet another broad grassy track coming up from the left which might be that one huh. turn right up the slope there must be another one. That can't be it, surely. Here, mostly on the left, but some on the right, are a large number of hut circles and larger pounds, in one of which you will find an abandoned apple crusher. I think it's going to be that, that track, that person there's walking up. We'll go for that. I can kind of see circles over there, kind of. Why this was left here and never finished is a mystery. After exploring the hut circles, carry on up the grassy path, bearing slightly right of the communications mast of North Hessery Tor. 
After 100 metres, look out for the stone rows we followed earlier. Right, okay, yeah, so we're just doing a little circle. What do you reckon? Big grassy track. It's got to get in it. I honestly can't tell what's just normal granite rubble lying around on the moor and not some stones. <laughs> some more stones. Oh, where are we now? Oh, I'm not seeing any apple crusher. Mostly on the left, but some on the right, a large number of hut circles and larger pounds. In one of which you'll find an abandoned apple crusher. It's been Nick, mate. Right, so keep up, heading towards slightly to the right of Hessery Tor. Hessery Tor. That's up there. This is the rose. So actually, we should be further over here. Nah. So cross the Lee on the same clapper bridge as previously. That little stone. Maybe that's what it is. I did ask in a previous video, what is a clapper bridge? What makes a clapper bridge? Maybe that's it. It literally is a little bit of granite lent over a river. That's a clapper bridge. Makes sense, doesn't it? Right, done that. Turn right as far as the cyst. Now, what's the cyst, the broken thing? Yeah, it's that broken capstone thing over there. Now, bare left, again on a grassy path towards a large standing stone and a small stone circle. Although many of the stones are missing. Well, I can see the, I can see the large standing stone, so that's good. Do you think the people of Merivale were so merry in the valley that they named it Merivale? I don't hear any other more valid explanations. It does prove they must go pretty deep, those stones. If they can withstand one of them ponies, like, and I imagine a cow as well. Um, you know, having a good scratch. Oh, it actually is a little chamber. Wow. That is exactly the kind of thing I would have a nightmare about were I a child. <laughs> right. Onwards. Here we are at the stone circle. It looks pretty complete, actually. Um, to, my, to my eyes, anyway. And there's the big standing stone which we need to turn at. I was just reading the book, as you do on your travels, and it says... This area is surrounded by the remains of old industries. Uh, and if you look around, you will see evidence of granite quarrying to the left and right of the start point. Seems hard to imagine, but at the height of the mid 19th century, some 600 men were employed. That explains the school, doesn't it? It's quite something. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Sometimes I think, is it just me? Because I was brought up on the moor, you know, but I just look at it, I think, there is nothing better. Look. That's quite an impressive stone, isn't it? Is that a little heel stone thingy? Was it a clock? Like, um, you know, Stonehenge. Does the shadow hit the little stone on a particular day of the year? Right, we are heading down this track. Looks like it splits there. Uh, oh, it says ignore any side turnings to the right. Okay. I don't know if you'll see that with the, what, with the, uh, the fishy eye lens, but the, you, on the horizon there, massive great quarry, huge. You look at that and you think, yeah, 600 guys, you can kind of understand that and the quarry on the other side. Um, apparently the, the stone for the Houses of Parliament was from here. It says you should be able to see the uh, line of the old railway is clear to see on our right. Maybe we're just not there yet, I don't know. 
It says the railway was built by the Plymouth and Dartmoor Railway uh, in 1823 and reached Princetown by 1825. Over a distance of 20 miles, it climbed 1,400 feet. Wow. Originally horse-drawn, the line was never profitable and was taken over by GWR in 1883. It closed in 1956. But what a superb heritage railway it would make today. It would, wouldn't it? Oh, people would definitely do that, wouldn't they? I'd do that, blimey. What a beautiful thing that could be. Dropping people off in Plymouth. You can get there easily and then get on the railway. Just trundle up to Princetown. Oh, yeah. I'd buy that for a dollar. Definitely. Um, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I'm just looking at the book and I can see I can see a standing stone that we're going to look at in a minute. But it says there's a bit where the, a grassy area where you can see a ford crossing the stream on your right. I may have already seen that actually. Could be here down here. Grassy area, so I can see the stream, but I don't see a ford. But you know what? I don't think it matters. I can see, I can see where we've got a head. There's a, there's a picture of it in the book. Girl, look, that stone there is right ahead. And uh, according to the book, that's where we're going. It would be interesting to see the railway. I wish I could make it out. It'd be interesting to see the Ford as well. I can't see that either. Who knows? Who knows? The matter does it. We know where we're going. You can can't really get lost on it. I mean, on a clear day, because you know where the car park is. Because look, there's that little grove of trees. And that is it. Do you know what? This um, this walk, hmm, it kind of is. It's a bit like the one well, of no, the Haytor one. I think even was longer. This feels like a, not really a walk, just a just to go somewhere and have a little walk with a dog and get back in the car. That's what this walk is. And very lovely it is too, on a lovely day like this. Very, very easy, straightforward walk. And uh, I have been here on a, uh, a particularly hot summer's day. And down by that river there, or a little stream. Oh, heaven. Heavenly. Oh. Okay, now just up there and running across there and there's a little tree on the horizon. I very, I, I, whether you'll see that or not, I bet that's it. I bet that's the railway going across there, across the top. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. I've seen the railway. There's nothing else that could be a railway anyway. There's quite a few of those old railway lines around sort of well, around Dartmoor actually. Like there's one at Lidford, there's one at, um, well there's a few in Tavistock. Uh, Oakhampton of course, but that one is running. Uh, now and again. It would be lovely to see them opened up again, it really would. Maybe one day. So here's the original TA stone. Oh, I've forgotten what that means. Uh, da -da -da -da. You can still clearly see the T and I can. It's right there. And these mark the 17th century route of the once busy pack horse track from Ashburton to Tavistock. Ashburton, Tavistock. 
Ashburn. I might do that when I get back, but and if I don't get around to it, go on Google Maps and have a look at Ashburton and have a look at Tavistock and see where they join up. This is nowhere near that, is it? Is it? It's not the route I would choose. But then I guess the A38, you know, probably wasn't around back then. <laughs> uh, oh, that must have been a rough old road. Wow. Right, well, I can see the school nearly back at the car. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, this little jaunt on the moor. If you did, please subscribe, comment, like, all that good stuff. I very much appreciate it and it very much helps. Um, I approve of this walk. If you just want something short, just get out, stretch your legs and enjoy a bit of the moor. This is a good one. So, for now, I will see you next time. Take care, enjoy your stomping, and cheers.